everyone. I welcome you all to today's seminar on how to recover after a fall. So previously we have done a seminar on fall prevention. So uh, there are a lot of resources available for how to prevent from the fall, but not many of us know how to get up and recover after the fall, both physically and also emotionally. So in today's seminar, I'll try to cover up all that uh, aspect. So let's get started. So uh, I'll try to cover up the uh, following four topics. First is, what are the risk factors for falls? Why you fall down? What are the immediate steps you should take after you fall? Or what are the steps you should do or what you should do if someone else falls? And how you can recover from a fall? So a uh, fall is very common. It can happen to anyone at any stage of life and impact can be both physical and also emotional. So uh, according to World Health Organization, fall is an event which results uh, for a person coming to rest on the ground or floor or any lower areas. So uh, currently in India, more than one third of the population over 65 years and more than half of the population over 85 years fall each year, in which 9% of the people develop fear of fall. So the uh, consequences of fall can be psychological, physical, functional, which can lead to uh, directly or indirectly lead to reduced quality of living. So physically, once you fall down, you can uh, develop fracture, pain, bruising, head injury and also infection. Functionally, you uh, lose the, uh, your independence, you uh, tend to depend more on others and also this also impact on the social care cost. So psychologically, you can uh, develop fear of fall due to loss of confidence, reduce motivation, you start isolating yourself which can lead to depression, anxiety, reduce motivation which is uh, also uh, also the fear factor for fall. So this is how you develop the negative circle of fall. So first, you already have the risk factor for falling. Once you fall down, you lose the confidence, you restrict your social activity, you uh, restrict yourself, you are scared to move out of your bed, chair, walk, which can lead to depression, reduce motivation, and again, another add on this factor for your fall. So let's discuss about uh, the risk factor for fall or who all are prone for fall. So risk factor for fall can be either intrinsic, extrinsic or your behavioral. Intrinsic means relating to a person or a condition. Extrinsic relating to your environment or also your home environment. So the first risk factor for fall is always the main one, the previous history of fall or the previous history of fracture, uh, impaired gait and balance, restricted mobility, reduced muscle strength, uh, underlying neurological condition, neurological condition are those conditions which can affect your nervous system, brain, uh, which can include Parkinson's disease, stroke, vertigo, where you develop the dizziness, a uh, musculoskeletal condition which can affect your joint and muscles like arthritis, fracture, or uh, cardiovascular disorder which affects your heart and circulation, uh, which can be a uh, few disorder like postural hypotension where you develop uh, drop in your BP after changing the position or a simple. Also, certain medication like uh, sedative hypnotic, anti-depression, or cardiovascular agent like diuretic, which is given to increase the urine output, are also a risk factor for fall. Also, impaired uh, cognition, vision, impaired uh, hearing, low mood, pain is also the risk factor for fall. So, uh, risk factor can be in your home surrounding also, such as stairs and steps, Clutter where, where you, are, you have a tripping hazard, floor covering, poor lightning clear or shadow on the surface, no furniture, heavy doors, uneven ground, 
inappropriate walking aids or pets and also your behavior like uh, restricted physical activity or you don't do any exercise you have a sedentary lifestyle poor nutrition or uh, food intake alcohol intake carrying reaching bending or any risk taking behavior and also your foot and clothing choice can be a risk factor for the fall now let's discuss about post fall time scale so once you have fallen down and when you remain on the floor for between 10 to 59 minutes, it is considered as delayed initial recovery. So the impact here of delayed initial recovery is psychological and emotional trauma with increased post-fall anxiety and decreased functional independence and activity engagement. So now when the faller remains on the floor for more than 60 minutes, it is uh, considered as a long life and the impact here is same as delayed initial recovery but with addition physical and psychological element which can lead to post-fall syndrome. So the symptoms of post-fall syndrome is here while walking around, moving around, getting out of the bed, a chair, anxiety whenever you have to get out of the house, social isolation, occupational deprivation or self-destruction cycle, a negative cycle of fall as we have discussed earlier. So how do we reduce the post-fall risk? First is post-fall assessment from your healthcare provider, role of ambulance service immediately after you have fallen down and have some injuries and impact on care. Your caregiver should be able to help you get up uh, when there is no uh, major injuries. So, uh, also, they should be able to determine whether it's safe for you to move or not. So, uh, how we determine whether it's safe for you to move or not, we'll be discussing in the upcoming slides. Now, let's, uh, let us discuss what you should do or what if you or someone else fall down. So, first, you check if there is any clear sign of danger. Any response, the airway is open. If breathing is adequate or the pulse is normal, if no, we call the ambulance immediately, keep the caller calm and comfortable and wait with them until the ambulance arrives. If yes, we'll again check for intense, if there is any intense pain or any suspected collapse, trauma to neck, back or head, any unusual behavior, change in behavior, marked difficulty in breathing or intense chest pain, bleeding freely uh, even after elevating the limbs, the bleeding had not stopped, loss of consciousness, evidence of fracture. If yes, to any one or more, again, you'll call the ambulance and wait with the resident. If no, you'll check for the fast test. That is, if facial movements are normal, if arm movements are normal, Either the speech is normal and if the person is oriented to time, place and person. If no, call the ambulance immediately. If yes, we'll start uh, helping the resident get up from the floor by any of the technique which we'll, I'll be showing you later. Okay. The first one is uh, you simply sit okay, and try to Get near the stable furniture, which can be uh, the edge of the couch or the bed. If that option is not available, you can turn the chair as shown in the video. Now, once you have turned the chair, one hand on the stable furniture, one hand on the knee and push yourself up and stand. Now, what you should not do here is, you should not try to get closer to the furniture that is not stable. Now, if you get closer to the uh, unstable furniture, what will happen when you pull it, you'll just pull the furniture over yourself and you might possibly sustain more injuries. Now, the next technique, whenever uh, there is no furniture, stable furniture nearby uh, and your knees are feeling okay, what you'll do is, you'll roll onto the side and onto the stomach. You come on the stomach. Now, come on the hand 
and both the knee and start crawling to your nearest seat. So after getting on the seat, you lift up the leg. Make sure your leg is flat on the ground, not lifting the heel. And you will push yourself up, stand or sit down. So uh, if you have any knee pain, uh, what you can do is you can simply try to scoot yourself or lift your hip up and move yourself. So if you have any helper available, they can help you create the step with a stack of blanket or a stepper or help you move up on the chair. Now, if it's too hard for you to score, you can use one extra seat or a bed seat. You roll the bed seat, turn the patient to one side, tuck the bed seat underneath the buttons. Again, turn the patient to the other side, pull the bed seat as shown in the video, or what you can do, roll and unroll the bed seat. Now, you spread the bed seat. And now it looks like a huge sling for you to carry the patient and help them scoot towards the chair. If two person is available for you to help, they can help you from either of both, both the sides. So what you do, lift the patient, create the step with a stuck of blanket or the stepper, lift the person and make them sick. So these are the various techniques which can be used to recover from the fall or to get up immediately after a fall. So how to recover from a fall? Recovering after a fall, it involves both immediate and long-term steps to ensure the proper healing and to prevent the future fall. So in short-term steps, you'll assess the injuries, seek help and get up safely. You'll assess for any check for any pain, using cuts or swelling. If there is any severe pain, inability to move or any sign of serious injury, fracture or any head injury, you'll seek the medical attention immediately. Also, if you are not able to get up on your arm, uh, you'll seek the medical help. If you are able to do, get up safely using one of the above techniques. So what to do post fall or how to take care after your how to take care of yourself after a fall. First is rest and elevation. If there is any swelling, you can apply ice or even bandaging might help. Pain management with the help of physical therapist, your physician, or uh, some painkiller like ibuprofen. Monitor symptom for any worsening of sign like um, increased pain, swelling bruising or any new symptoms like dizziness, confusion or change in behavior and go for a regular follow-up care. Now, the main goal of recovery, recovery after a fall is to gain back your confidence. So, how you will gain back your confidence here is with the physical activity which, can, which will improve your strength and balance, which can reduce the risk of falling, less for eventually you will get more confidence to move around. So the first one here is the physical therapy and exercises. This one to improve your balance, strength, coordination. Also, you can improve your activities like walking, tai chi, yoga, or dancing. Home safety modification, installing grab bell, railing wherever required. Do installing door knobs, removing the clutters or wires from the floor. Uh, sufficient space to move around. Uh, right choice of footwear. Footwear should, uh, should, should provide you the good support. You should avoid any high heels or slipper that can easily slip up. Health management. Regularly review medication with your doctors as some can affect your balance. Also ensure you are managing your chronic condition effectively like Parkinson disease, stroke, any heart disease. Stay hydrated. Eat well. Regularly check your vision and hearing. Use glasses or hearing aids as required. Use assistive device. 
canes, walker, and any other assistive device can add balance and stability if used properly. Ensure you are taking proper walking aid training to prevent the future fall because improper use of assistive device is itself a risk factor for fall. So, uh, as we have come to the end of this discussion, also I'd like to add one more point. Remember, recovery is a personal journey and each step, no matter how small your step is, it's still a victory for you. So, uh, summary of our discussion today was work within the fall, so not just focus on reduction, but on intervention post-fall. Fear of cycle falling creates a self-fulfilling negative cycle. People are often more afraid of long life than the fall itself. And impact on carriers cannot be underestimated. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you.